The image you see here on the left is of a damaged knee. It's using a technique called an MRI, Magnetic Resonant Imaging. What it focuses on is the behavior of water molecules, and in particular, the hydrogen proton that's in water molecules. It behaves differently in different environments and produces different radio waves. Those correspond to the image you see here. In this particular program, we're going to focus on a technique called nuclear magnetic resonance. First off, as I mentioned earlier, it focuses on the behavior of the protons in hydrogen. Let's focus on that proton for a moment. That proton can have one of two spins, clockwise or counterclockwise. And a spinning proton behaves much like a magnet or a small dipole. Opposite spinning protons create dipoles that are oriented in opposite directions. If I place that proton in a magnetic field, it can be at either a higher energy state or a lower energy state. At the lower energy state, the north and south align each other by means of attraction. At the higher energy state, the south and south or north and north face each other. That would be at a higher energy state due to repulsion. At that higher energy state, that proton will essentially try to reverse its spin and switch its dipole so it can move to a lower energy state. When moving from that high to low energy state, it emits a radio wave. In much the way that an electron moving from a distant orbit to a closer orbit emits light radiation, my proton, by changing its spin, emits radio waves. And the behavior of those radio waves is recorded. So this technique, NMR, focuses on the behavior of protons and essentially the electromagnetic spectrum in the radio wave section. Consider, if you will, these two molecules. The hydrogens that are present in these, and in particular their protons, will behave differently. They will produce different radio waves because of the environment that they're in. That environment is determined by nearby hydrogens and other elements that are present in their molecules. Here I'm going to present a picture of its NMR spectrum of these two molecules. The one located at zero corresponds to the NMR spectrum of tetramethylsilane. This particular chemical is used to compare all other hydrogen environments too, so it is always present in your sample to establish the zero or the reference point. The hydrogens in ethane produce a slightly different radio signal that differs by about one part per million in what's called the chemical shift. Let's look at a couple of NMR spectrum of other species. Here I'll start with the chemical butane. Now butane, the hydrogens that are present in it, essentially exist in two environments. The hydrogens that are at the ends of the molecule and the hydrogens that are inside the molecule, indicated by the red and blue colors. So as a result, on its spectrum, I would see two peaks. In the chemical below, methoxyethane, there are essentially three hydrogen environments. Now the two hydrogen environments at the ends of the molecule are slightly modified from each other due to the presence of that oxygen. The nearby oxygen causes the hydrogens that are indicated in the green to be at a slightly different environment than those shown in the red. And again, we have the two hydrogens in blue internal to the molecule. So there are three hydrogen environments present in this molecule. Notice again, I have a little bit of the sample of that to which all others are compared, the TMS, that generates the peaks that you see at zero. So generally speaking, the number of peaks that you see, not counting the one at zero, corresponds to the different numbers of hydrogen environments that are in your sample. Let's look a little bit at the area underneath those traces or peaks. So again, I'm going to look at two molecules, butane and 2-methylpropane. Both of these have two hydrogen environments, those that are on the periphery of the molecule and then the hydrogen environment internal to the molecule. Here you can see that they both have two peaks, but what you will notice quite differently is the height or the area under each of those peaks. The area underneath the peaks gives us some indication of the number of hydrogens that exist in that particular zone or that particular environment. The area can be calculated by means of considering each peak as a small triangle. And sometimes you can have presented on your graphs what's called an integration piece where that integration trace will actually show the comparative areas that are generated. Here in orange, I've shown the integration trace for the NMR spectrum of butane. You can see that the line climbs up equivalent to roughly four hydrogens that are shown in blue. And then the next area is a bigger step up that corresponds to the six hydrogens that are present on the periphery of the molecule. 
Now the NMR trace on the other graph shown below, I have only one hydrogen in that environment that's internal. As a result, the ratio of my areas will be roughly one to nine. And I can see that by the approximate difference in the areas underneath those two peaks. So the area under the peak gives us some idea of the ratio of how many hydrogens exist in each environment. Lastly, I want to look at what's called the chemical shift. Here I have two molecules. Both of them have two hydrogen environments. Both of them have the same ratio of hydrogens in each of those environments. So let's look at their traces. I want to focus in particular on the hydrogens that I've shown here in blue. In the first molecule, that one peak is located off about 2.9. And in the second peak, that single hydrogen exists at about 11.8. That's called the chemical shift. By consulting my IB data booklet, those chemical shifts correspond to certain functional groups. So here I've identified them in the IB data booklet. First of all, the shift at 2.9 corresponds to the H that's present perhaps in an alcohol, which can shift anywhere between one and six. The shift at 11.8 corresponds to the hydrogen that exists in a carboxylic acid. As you can see, its range is nine to 13. So the chemical shift gives me some idea of the functional group of that particular hydrogen. We can also predict what the NMR spectrum of a sample might look like. Let's look at this one for an example, 2-propanol. First of all, the hydrogens that exist at the end of the molecule will exist in one biron. They're symmetrical to each other and equivalent. The hydrogen I've shown here in red will be in a slightly different environment than the hydrogen located at the end of the alcohol group because of the proximity of that oxygen. So I would expect three peaks, and the ratio of those peaks would be one to one to six. Now where those peaks would be shifted, I'll consult the IB data booklet. First of all, the ones that are at the end of the molecule, the CH3s, will exist somewhere between 0.9 and one. The hydrogen that's attached to the alcohol could be anywhere from one to six. The hydrogen that I've highlighted here in red is not really defined in our table, so I can put that anywhere at this point. Anyway, here is the actual trace of this particular chemical, and you can see the one to one to six ratio as predicted. So the NMR is the final one of our three techniques. Again, the three of them, mass spectroscopy, infrared spectroscopy, and NMR. And you use these three together to analyze and determine the structure of compounds. Again, questions are always welcome, and please don't hesitate to pass on a comment.